Right here, we've got a Heatline Capri today, which is basically a Valent EcoFit Pure or a Glowworm Energy. Uh, it's been leaking from the burner gasket there and also the sump as well. I don't know if you can see there, there's a little bit of crusting there. So I'm going to be changing the burner gaskets. Um, I've got a new sump as well, so I'm going to change that over and then we'll give it a full service whilst we're doing it as well. So on these ones, if you can remove the left-hand side casing, it will make it a lot more easier to get to these two nuts. Um, especially when you've got the 10 mil one at the back, that can be quite a tricky one to get to. Uh, so you've got four 10 mil nuts, undo the gas connection on the gas cock, uh, on the gas valve, and now the fan and everything just come out in one go. And you can see where that seal's failed on there. So we're gonna be replacing these seals. Take this burner out which literally just comes out like so have a look in there as we can see it's never been serviced so we're going to flush that through first and then i'll change that sump right at the end so i've decided i'm going to change the sump first before flushing it through because i'd rather get that done and then pour water through it because even if i pour water through it and then take that off there might be residual water in there don't want to drip it all into the boil, uh, into the boiler. So to change this sump, it looks fairly simple. I've not done one before, this is my first time, but we've got one, two, and then at the back, we've got, I don't know if you can see in the mirror there, there's a T20 screw there, and there's one at the back there. So I'm hoping I can get my little mini barcode socket set up into the back there, undo those four screws and pull it down. Let's see how I get on with it. So we've got the sump out finally. That screw was actually the hardest to get, which is the one at the back there, because you've got your return pipe in the way. So worst case scenario, I was thinking I might have to drain the boiler down, pop the return elbow out there and get into it. But I managed to use the barco with the little extension piece because that on its own wouldn't get into that gap. So I had to bring it down lower the extension bar went up behind the return pipe and into the torque screws. So I'm actually got all the screws out. That's the condition of the old sump. I'm gonna give this a clean all around, grease it up, and then we've got the new sump here. So that's the part number for a new sump if you ever need one. And this is the part number for the burner seals. I'll pop those in the description as well.
Okay, so the new sump is on. Got managed to get all four screws in. So this is different to the ideal sump where you haven't got any clips that you need to clip in out the back. Um, they do actually, I think they expect you to take out the main heat exchanger because it gives you the four bolts there, which are actually the ones that are holding the heat exchanger uh, onto the actual casing. Um, however, on the back of it, there's literally just this little tab and it's not even a clip. It just sort of pushes up at the back. So once it's made the seal with the rubber gasket and your screws are in, that's fine. You've seen me, I've just poured a bit of water through it. Um, so now I'm just literally just washing it all through. These heat exchangers, I'm not a big fan of them, the aluminium ones, because they are a pain in the ass to get clean properly. So you can, all you can really do is just wash them out, uh, flush them through and then get rid of any of the crap that builds up inside there. So I'm gonna do all that, clean out the trap um, and then change the seals in there. I'll show you guys the seals when I change them in a minute. So now we're gonna change over the burner seal. So we've got two seals in these heat exchangers. So you've got the graphite seal, which you get on the normal Valent G10 seals. You've also got a silicon seal as well. So you gotta make sure you change both of them. Uh, the red one, obviously, as you can see, goes on the outside. Graphite one goes in the inside. You can't really get them mixed up. And it also comes in its predefined shape as well. So you can't sort of put it back to front or anything like that as well. So I'm gonna swap those over. Then we're gonna pop the burner back onto the main heat exchanger, put everything back together, and then start doing our 26 man checks. Burner seals all swapped over. Now you can't actually get these wrong because they've got these little tabs here so that you can only put it in one way. It won't go in a different way around. Uh, now, one thing I was struggling when I was taking the old one out was this nut, which goes on that back one there. So I was trying to wind it all the way up, making sure I don't drop it. And then I realized I was taking it out, the back nuts, they're open-ended ones. So I can preset this on there. So that's not going to drop now. Do the same with the other one. So those two are preset. Now I can slide the burner in, set it down, and then put these two in afterwards. So that's all back together now. Um, I'm just gonna carry up my 26.9 checks on the boiler, make sure everything's good. Then we should all be good to go. So just goes to show you how easy it is to actually change the sump on that, it's not too bad. Uh, cleaning out the main heat exchanger, just take the burner out, flush it through with water, um, and then just put it all back together. Obviously, change the field when you take the burner out. Um, and yeah, hope you guys found this video helpful. Any comments or questions? Leave a comment below. Cheers, guys.